But first, the acceleration towards digital continues to gather pace across the industry. To meet this challenge, Euroclear has unveiled a long-term strategy based on the construction of an open, shared platform that offers data-enabled services for all market participants. And this, in turn, will be facilitated by a company-wide digital transformation to create an integrated and scalable cross-asset platform. Plenty happening, which is why we're joined now by Bernard Ferrand, who is the Chief Commercial Officer at the Euroclear Group. It's good to see you. Good now, to see you. this is where we have the history lesson, because... Euroclear, it was established in 1968, so it's a baby like me. But I mean, the bottom line is that you've had skin in the game for five decades, in fact, more than that. And you're as relevant today as you were at the time. So what is it? What are the driving factors that have kept you at the top? I think what is unique in, in Euroclear is that we've always been able just to connect issuers to investors. So when we were born in 1968, indeed, uh, there was an ask just to support the international bond market called the Eurobond market. And then we've leveraged what we've done for the Eurobond market, and then we expanded bit by bit and gradually to other markets, to other asset classes, always bearing in mind the DNA of Euroclear, which is before being a group, we are a financial market infrastructure. Euroclear recently uh, shared its long-term strategy uh, and, and vision. Tell us a little bit about them uh, and what has sparked the call for them at this point in time. Okay, but first of all, I mean, again, we are leveraging what we've done over the last 50 years. So the new long-term vision and strategy is nothing about the revolution, it's rather an evolution about what we've always been doing. Um, typically, again, I mentioned connecting the issuers to the investors using the intermediaries in the chain, like the agent banks, the lead managers, the global custodian, but of course the dealers as well that play a very important role in being the sell side to the buy side. So as, as soon as you've got this, we've managed to create this ecosystem where everyone meets and everyone is actually able just to trade between themselves. And I think that the, that's the big value of it. So that we will continue to leverage and to build up uh, being the collateral management between the connection between issuers and, and investors. But then that's the horizontal axis. And then if you look now, what we're going to do is more on the vertical axis. And we're going to expand about ESG, about data, about continuing the market expansion, so connecting to more markets. And I will come back to that because I think it's very important. And also everything that is what we call DFMI. Okay, so DFMI is nothing than the digital financial market infrastructure. Now, we also tend to abbreviate that by D square FMI, which is digital and data enabled financial market infrastructure. So, and that goes along what you mentioned. So being an open shared platform, but also creating value for the customers. But this is the fascinating thing about it as well, that it all started from the Eurobond platform. You've grown it and you've become more holistic. And you, you touched on this in that answer, but it's reinforcing the service offerings for, for, issu for issuers and investors. So what are the key propositions you have for these players? Because there are so many components to the part. Yes, indeed. I mean, again, we will continue to do what we've been doing for the last 50 years, but we will add up as part of the open share platform, add up more information, more data that are valuable, be it for the issuers, but also be it for the investors. So the value is in the data, effectively, that, the, you're, push, that you're pushing in their direction. Yes, it will be a data enabled play. Uh, but again, it's not only the data of Euroclear, it will be the data that can be sourced from different providers that will actually bring the value for the, for the, for the ecosystem. Now, this year alone, you've announced two strategic partnerships with uh, exciting ESG startups, uh, Greenemy and Impact Cubed. Indeed. Uh, what was the reason behind this decision and, and how do they fit into Euroclear's strategy in the sustainable finance space? Again, I, I don't want to repeat myself, but ESG is very important, data is very important, and both companies where we're partnering with, Greenemy, is, is looking at the issuer side, so how can they actually help the issuers in their requirement to comply with the European taxonomy in terms of disclosure, so capturing those data, and then we can use those data for the benefit of the investors. On the other side, Impact Cube focus on the investor side, where they would be able, by using data as well, to help the investors to make better investment patterns decision or rebalancing of their ESG portfolio into a different type of securities that always be ESG focused. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you've mentioned these fintech partners because you're actually hosting the Discovery Pavilion with them for Indeed. the first time here at Cyber, so we'll look out for that. But I mean, what are your thoughts on partnerships between big financial institutions like yours and 
fintechs, because once upon a time, there seemed to be an opposition between the two, but the ice is thawing, and now there seems to be more of a coming together. What's your overall take? I think if, I will take the analogy about what happened with the stock exchanges uh, many years back. Uh, many years back, there were some a new initiative like what was called the alternate exchanges. Um, and those alternate exchanges actually been to the market to disrupt a bit the, the way the stock exchanges were actually acting. And at the end of the day, what happened is that all those alternate exchanges have been acquired by the traditional exchanges. Now, why do I make the analogy here is because ESG and data, I mean, really, fintechs are playing a very important role into that space. And I think the banks are all, are all in need just to build up their ESG solution, their data solution. And I think we're not different. So either we do it in-house or we're just looking around, scouting around. And I think fintechs is an ideal partner. So they will be acquired. There will be more acquisition on fintechs specializing into the ESG and data space. Mm. So you've actually seen more M&A taking, taking part in that sector yes. or occurring in that sector. Yes, I'm proud to say that the board has agreed that uh, we we can continue looking around, so yes. I'd love to know what's on the shopping list, but I know you're not going to tell <laughs> no, me. No, <laughs> exactly. But there will be much more on the shopping list. <laughs> Looking forward, Bernard, uh, your uh, five-year strategy. If you had to choose one, what would be one essential element for success with you? I think it's uh, co-creating with our clients. Um, on, on a standalone basis, we can innovate, we can build product, we can build services. But if the, those services that we're building are no use for our clients, I think it really defeats the purpose of mm -hmm. us being a financial market infrastructure. So we, we like that approach. So it's just to consult, to listen, and then to, to implement. But implement not only for one client, but implement for the whole community, so the 2,000 clients that bank with us. Mm. I want to squeeze in another question before we close out. But look, on a very personal level, you are the chief commercial officer of Euroclear Group. Yes. Now, obviously, you're responsible for growing the business, making sure that all those component parts are working effectively for your clients. But what are you doing personally to continue to grow and to develop? Because you've got to be receptive to what's happening out there yeah. so that you can actually inject it into the business. Yeah. Actually, I like myself to apply what I call myself the three L. So it's listen, learn, and leverage. So listen also to my wife, because I think it's very important to listen to your <laughs> wife every day. Every man listen exactly. to their wife. <laughs> uh, no, but it's more listening to the clients, to the needs, to, uh, to the market trends. So interacting a lot and exchanging views with practitioners in the market, but also, as I said, with regulators, with clients, with, I mean, I mean ministries, etc. So... I think it's very important that we listen. Then, then you can learn what has been built already, so leveraging as well, then um, just to implement the good solution that comes handy for the market. And by leveraging, I think what is also important in my 22 years of Euroclear is uh, leveraging the network of contact that I managed to build over the years. Because it's only by engaging with people that you will build a more successful company. Then. Well, you know what, it's working, so keep up the good work. Thank you, I do appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Look, we'll see you soon, no doubt. But um, Bernard Ferrand, Chief Commercial Officer at the Euroclear Group, thank you so much for thank joining you. us on Cybos TV and enjoy the rest of the event. I will. Thank yes, you. Thank you.